Hi, everyone. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zigami with the Camper Report Show. And on this Camper Report Show, we are going to give you an update on a growing segment of the RV market. What is that, Bob? That's the park model RV. Some people call them PMRVs, but we like to call them park model trailers, park model RVs, but they're Closest thing to a house without being a house, it is an RV. We are going to talk to two major manufacturers. But first, we get all of our news. Where do we get all of our news? From Rick Kessler at RV Business Magazine and from Ben Quiggle at Woodall's Campground Magazine. The best in the business. Couldn't do the show without them. And we'll be back with more right after this. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the news section of the Camp Report Show. My name is John DePietro. That man over there is Bob Zagami. And uh, if he looks a little tired, it's because he has spent the last just about entire week at the Boston RV Show. And Bob, um, I know some of the national publications have said that the Boston RV Show exceeded the wildest expectations of many of the dealers. Tell us yeah. about that. It did, you know, after a week at Tampa, we came back to Boston for the, the Boston RV and Camping Expo, and it was. I mean, we thought it was going to be a good show. It was a great show. We thought the dealers would have some good selling days. They had some great selling days. Um, yeah, And I don't, other than thinking that maybe the people, the pent-up demand of the people, with all that's going on in the country now between immigration, the wars in Ukraine, uh rising tax rates, rising gas prices, food prices, that I just think that the people who went to the show said, I don't care what happens outside those doors. We got to do this now. These doors, I am going to buy a new RV. Yep. And, yep. and as you know, the prices were very aggressive. They came to sell, and every dealer I've talked to so far, very happy with the show. Yep. And the... Uh shoppers came to buy not just shop because i know on one of the days i think on the first day of the show 15 minutes into the show the first rv was sold now that person obviously had done some homework but it seems as though we're dealing with a more and more educated consumer did you find that out when you were talking with the dealers that that these people when they show up they've got their yellow legal pads with all their documentation right there Uh that, that's true about the Boston show because it is more expensive than other in, indoor shows, but the quality of the audience is amazing. But it will cost somebody, could cost them a couple hundred dollars to go to the show when there are a lot of other shows in New England that are mm-hmm. free or have uh, less expensive uh, parking. Right. But the people, the people that come... You know, we don't have any tire kickers. We don't. We don't have people who just decide to go to a show and walk around and see what's new with no intention whatsoever of buying. Yep. It's it's a quality audience. The manufacturers, reps that visit Boston, when they go back home, they say to their boss, "I I want Boston every year," and that that proved out. I mean, this reminds me of what it was ten years ago. Never mind five years ago, COVID, COVID. But uh, the 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 people were waiting in line to get the next available salesperson. They, they, and, and the pricing was amazing. When you looked at the pricing, I haven't seen them this aggressive in a long time. And that's all of them. That, that's all of them. And they were, getting the, they were getting the sales that they had hoped to get. You said two things that I want to, I want to follow up on. Um, expensive show. The fact is... Um, if you go to the Boston show, you have to pay 20 to 25 to $40 to park, depending upon where you went. Okay. So there's some money there. It costs $17 each to attend. And the snack bar prices are pretty hefty as well. So that is not somebody saying, come on, honey, let's go out and, um, you know, go over to the RV show for this afternoon. Um, that's the serious buyer. Now, right. the other right. thing is this. They were waiting in line with pre-purchased tickets for an hour before the show opened on both Saturday, which was the big day, and Sunday, which was a stormy day. So these people were were intent, not content, but intent on yeah, they, um, buying they, an RV. They were very serious. And, and right. to your point, they had done their homework. A lot of them knew 
you know, they ask for a specific dealer, they ask for specific products that they might, you know, do you have toy holders? Do you have super C's? So they, they knew the terminology, they knew what they had and they weren't afraid to spend the money. I mean, one of our dealers, if, and if he wants to talk about it, he can talk about it, but we know one of our dealers sold seven RVs in the first hour that we were open on Thursday afternoon. We've never yeah. been open on Thursday yeah. afternoon. And then the Friday, we were open 12 to 8. The Friday was kind of like the old Saturday, and Saturday was gangbusters, absolute gangbusters. Yep. Same with Sunday. Sunday, you know, we had the uh, impending weather, bad weather coming in, and we had football games starting at 3 o'clock. But well, they, took, they took care of their business early. They got their RV. The good part of the Patriots not doing well is we didn't have to worry about the defection to the Patriots. Right. You're right. Like we have had in previous years where um, – you know, if they hadn't won their division, um, that could have bit right into our Saturday and Sunday time periods. But uh, they yeah. won, and, you know, didn't have to play that week. The other thing I've noticed with um, RV buyers is this, is that a couple of the days you had recent retirees and you also had people that I spoke to that just bought an RV. Now, I'm saying if you just bought your first RV, why are you going to the show? But um, I find that uh, the response was because we want to make sure that we made the right decision. Isn't that an interesting uh, reason for attending the show? That that and once you get into the lifestyle, many of the decisions you make, not all of them, but many of them are emotional in nature. You, you see something and you want it. And it's not unusual for people to trade in after two or three years. Average average is probably six or seven years. But it's not unusual to trade in for something different. And they complement that with the number of seminars that we have. And the seminar, all the seminars were well attended. We had our technical advisors, Randy Murray, Ryan um, Hadley, Mike Sokol. Okay. And they did individual seminars. They did a technician roundtable where they answered questions from the people. We had David Merman Scott doing, uh, telling how he uses his Winnebago Rebel uh, doing extreme adventures like uh, he's 62 years old and he hikes and he bikes and he climbs mountains and he does kayaks and he, he does all that other stuff that they don't have in the campgrounds. He, he's uh, an extreme outdoor enthusiast yep. and they they loved his story. Plus he made a lot of upgrades to his uh, Rebel oh, that he also amazing. talked about and, re and reviewed with the uh, people in the audience. Yeah, yeah. Out. The last thing I wanted to say was the number of people that I bumped into that were young professionals that have said they've got the capability now to hit the road um, and not have to be tied to an office. And they're taking advantage of that as well. And the new technology that's available that allows you to be anywhere, such as new solar upgrades and new um, inverters and, and uh, lithium batteries and that type of thing, really cut the corporate cord, don't they? Well, yeah. And that, that was kind of a carryover from Tampa. We met a lot of those young people in Tampa who had gone full-timing when they're 24, 25, 26 years old. And we had several people, certainly in my seminar, uh, we had one woman who came back. I think she was there all three days. I know she was there for two days. And she was just going to save up you know, her money and come the end of the year, she was going to buy a motorhome and head out to the great country. And uh, see you later, folks. Yep. And she, she was all excited because, you know, Sometimes, unfortunately, a lot of their relatives or friends say, what are you crazy? You're going to drive across the country. And when when they know that others have done it and they enjoy it and it's very fruitful for them to do it financially, then they let their hair down and say, no, I'm, I am going to buy an RV. Yep. And they did it in big numbers. Yep. And they do that. They do that. Yep. And they're doing it and, and having fun. And there you go. cool part, because owning an RV is fun. So with that being said, we are going to give you two features right after this with um, a focus on park models. Two of the major producers of the product, Crop, which has been around for uh, over 50 years, yep. and Elevation, which is a brand new company, only been around for four or five years. So, two years. Two years. Two years. Okay. Even two less. Years. Even, two even years newer than they, I thought. Two years that they've been in the show. Yeah. Even newer than I thought. With that being it, said, it was very interesting. But we took 
We took those two because many of the park model manufacturers and it drops down to destination trailers too. They have, you know, the the standard thing for trailers and fifth wheels. They have a brochure and they got five floor plans and they got three colors. That's what you get. You get whatever comes down the line and you have the same thing as 10 other people that buy it in your campground. The reason we wanted to take elevation park model homes and craft park model is they allow you to customize the home. Yep. yep. The park model. And yep. and you can make changes. We've done it on several of our crop units. And it's just if you're gonna spend that kind of money, uh you can have what you want. You can have bigger bathrooms, you can have bigger kitchens, you can have bigger uh living areas, gathering rooms, you can have lofts with bedrooms, you can have decks and sunrooms. So yep. it's it's a more home-like experience, but it is not a home. It is an RV. It's 400 square feet. But we wanted to get those two companies because both of them do customization. But you can sit down with the designers and say, I want this color. I want this floor. I want these drapes. Uh, I want these appliances. Uh, and it's a great buying experience for them also. Yep. Great. Stay with us. We've got a lot more coming up right here. Where, Bob? On the Camper Report Show. Fleck of Crop Park Model Homes and Austin. This new El Dorado, this new series is phenomenal. Like you'd never know we were in an RV. Right. We try to make it feel like home, open it up. It's got all the features of home, even some upgraded options than you might have in your own home right now. Tell, tell the fans a little bit of the story about El Dorado because Crop is a very long time member of the RV industry. Yeah. And give them a little bit of the background. Yeah, a long time ago, uh, we made manufactured homes, and the Eldorado was the top of the line series for us. Um, so, Trevor, being a fourth generation owner for us, wanted to bring that back and kind of pay homage to that where we started. Yep. So, this is his take on that Eldorado. You got your solid surface here, you got your giant TV, big shower, house appliances. And this thing's loaded into the gills. Yep. You know, we go to these RV shows and you guys come along and support us. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people that come to the shows have never seen a park model. They, they look at it and they think they're looking at a house. Tell, tell everybody the distinction between a, an RV and a house. How, why are these different? Why are they RVs and why you can have them in the campgrounds? Yeah, sure thing. Well, it's on wheels. So that's the first difference between that and a house. Um, now I understand why there is confusion because like you said it does feel like a house and a lot of things like this are built like a home but we're just in that square footage mark at 399 square feet that keeps us in the RV range so we're, we're in a sweet spot that we get to actually build you a home but you can put it in a campground as an RV yeah it, it's it's always fun to go to the factory because if people haven't seen what this type of quality is and and we can see this because it's on the you know the customer facing site but underneath the, the two by six floorboard the two by four board yeah. two by four you know finished walls that that is a house it really is yeah. especially with our insulation package you got r22 in the floor r11 in the walls and 29 in the ceiling double pane windows house type doors you're right this thing's ready for the weather I'm I'm always surprised that we as an industry don't sell ten times the number of park models that we that we sell. Right. Uh, it's it's really an education, but I know a lot of the dealers don't carry park models, mm -hmm. but they can build entire campgrounds. You know, we had one up in Maine, uh, you know, which was almost all truck park models. That's where I had my mm -hmm. unit for years, and. I would like to see more real estate investment people get engaged with this. Yeah, I think we're getting more and more interest from those kinds of people. I'm taking more calls from them you know, all the time. Yeah. I think as they get educated and feel like they're comfortable with it, you will see a big growth in the coming years. I, I hope so, because Krupp is just a, one of the longest standing manufacturers, certainly in the park model. As you say, they go back to manufacturing. It's not, not your first rodeo. No, and, no. <laughs> and, and Trevor did a great job of bringing back the Eldorado and the nameplate. Yep. So I want to thank you. I know we got people here that want to 
talk to you about park models, not talk to me about videos. But uh, awesome. Right. Thanks very yeah, much. Thank you, Appreciate Bob. it. Yes, thank you. Everybody, we are in Boston at the camping show, and um, we're at the Seacoast booth. We're in an elevation model, and looking at the camera, you see the young lady with glasses. That's Amanda from Seacoast, and Joel is from Elevation. Yes, and uh, hey, welcome to New England. Thank you. Well, she welcome to you, Joel. I mean, Amanda, yeah. you're already here. I live here. Yeah. She's yeah. used to this. <laughs> you know, so people, you hear the word park model, but they don't really. I don't really know what it means because there's so many different kind of RVs, but I mean, the, describe what, what a park model would be and how it differs from the kind that you would tow down the street. Sure. So park models are kind of your way, your home away from home. So you get all of the, you know, amenities of home, like you can have solid surface countertops, house appliances, really just nice home-like atmosphere at a campground, which is really nice. Hmm. And Joel, um, what separates Elevation from the pack? What, what makes you different? Oh, we feel like there's a lot that makes us different, but we're, we're actually in our seven series right now, which is our, our new debut this past year. This is what we would call the top of the line in, in the industry. Um, there's a lot of things we're doing in the seven series that, that no one else is. Uh, this features Anderson windows, hardwood trim, uh, where most are using paper wrapped MDF. Uh, so here you've got your solid countertops, plywood cabinets, um, I mean, I'll pull out one of these drawers for you here, John. This is solid wood, dovetailed. You know, it's got the slow close. Uh, so this is not your typical RV. And I think what Amanda was getting at is this is residential construction versus stick and tin or fiberglass, which is right. most of the trailers out here. You know, and with all due respect to quote unquote regular RVs, these are made differently. For and, sure. And with, you know, two by fours or two by sixes or whatever. Yeah, compared heavy insulation. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, can you use them year round? You know, that's a, that's a sticky subject. Uh, we legally like to say this is a three season camper. You know, what the customer does after the purchase is none of my business, um, but they are insulated very well, but there's some precautions you'd want to take. But you have HVAC systems in here. Absolutely, right. central heat and air in the floor. A lot of people are going to mini split systems right now. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, Amanda, how about your dealership? Where are you located and how people can find out more? Yeah, we're on, on Route 1 in Saco, Maine. Uh, you're welcome to check us out on our website, which is seacoastrv.com, um, or come on down and take a look. Okay, this particular unit, um, real refrigerator, right? I mean, it's yeah, not 22 cubits. Not fridge. a little. We open that door. Absolutely. We're using all GE okay, appliances. Okay, okay, that's the real thing. Okay, yeah. GE appliances. Okay, check it out. And okay, there you go. No beer. <laughs> no, 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 just beer. diet coke and water. Diet coke and water. Okay. <laughs> But a, a real stove, not yes. not a mini stove. Okay, you gotta take them to the bathroom, John. And show them the shower. That's the the big feature. Oh, okay, yes. you got a real sink. Yeah, Looks Kohler like faucets Kohler in the Kohler seven faucets. series. Yep. Okay. Okay. Counter space and all that other stuff. What did you say to look for in here? Well, this shower is kind of the Woo! the gem in this. The season. Rolls Royce of showers. Big sixty inch shower. Okay. Yep. Wow. Pretty cool. And this has got the loft in it. This is a rear loft only here. Rear bedroom. Uh, I mean, this, this stairway was actually designed by us for the first time this year. We're using solid wood treads, inch and three quarter thick, uh, exposed, you know, into the hallway with a view rail railing system. Okay. And uh, tons of space for cabinetry in the bathroom and everywhere else. So, once again, the name of the company is Elevation. We're Elevation Park Model Company. Okay. And we're partnering with Seacoast RV and uh, stop by and see them absolutely and stop by and see them at the show but if you don't seacoast rv is route one saco maine you got it